In this video, we're going to set up a butterfly spread uh, using call options and then uh, set out how to reverse the positions to get a reverse butterfly. So our basic starting point here is it's a butterfly, butterfly spread, and then the payoff and the spread, same as what you may have seen before, where um, you have the body of the butterfly and then uh, what appears like the wings. In this uh, butterfly, uh, profits are maximized when the underlying asset price stays within a particular region, close to the middle exercise. Typically, always X2 here is uh, halfway between X1 and X3. Uh, and when we uh, reach maturity, if the underlying asset is close to the middle exercise, then we generate uh, greater profits. Also, uh, the constituents of this option trading strategy is the combination here, or the portfolio, is made up of a long call with a lower exercise price, a long call with the highest exercise price, and then two short calls at the exercise that is halfway between the X1 and X3. Okay, so let's take a look at how that would work and also how we would estimate the premium using Black Shoals. Now in this uh, worksheet, I don't have VBA code here in the worksheet, so we've got to add in, right? So it's basically fairly blank. We have the parameter values uh, for Black Shoals, but uh, we need to specify the VBA code. I go into uh, Vinegar Hill, Black Shoals, Merton, come down to some code I obtained from Kerry Back. The link is there and you can go in. There's an interesting spreadsheet with lots of uh, good stuff. Um, and there's a textbook as well uh, that Kerry Back uh, uh, has written right, to explain that VBA code. Okay, we copy. So I, I'm copying this code, snippet of code. I go back into the spreadsheet uh, go to developer tab, Visual Basic, um, look for the workbook, it's book one in this case, insert module, control V to paste. So we've Black Shoals pot, but we also have Black Shoals call. If I come down beneath here and enter in Black Shoals, it will appear the user defined function comes up. And then uh, very simply FX, and we will load in the variables, map them across stock price is 100, exercise here is 60, the risk free rate 5%, the volatility is 10, Q is equal to zero, so no dividend yield, zero, and then the time period is equal to one year. Okay, now that's 42. Let's uh, use um, the middle values and then drag across to the next. And we can see the values uh, alter as we change the exercise. Note that the exercise here is exactly halfway between the 60 and 140. So this is the middle exercise. We might refer to it as X2 or K2 right, K1, K3, okay, and uh, if we change point two here, we get 1045, so all these update because equal signs are applied, and we have 1045, and that's a value we've checked on more than one occasion. Okay, so how do we build then in and graph the payoffs to each of the individual option positions, and then the combination. Um, I'm going to follow the approach outlined here in the labels. It's a fairly basic one, but we set out a range of stock prices or asset prices consistent here, what we have on the horizontal axis. And then we say, look, maximum of, so equals to maximum, open bracket, the stock price, which is 10 here, minus minus the exercise 
60 F4, so Fn and F4, uh, comma, zero, then close the bracket and then subtract the premium associated with that option. Notice that the premium is higher here. Likewise, we observe that here for this option with the lower call option, with the lowest strike price, it has the highest individual premium and will F4 that also and we can drag down. Okay, so let's drag that down and see what we get. Perhaps it would be useful to graph. So basically insert, come over to scatter graph and we have the first long call with the lower exercise and it does seem to correspond uh, with what we have in the graph. Okay, so let's pull the graph to one side. Next, we want to generate two short call options at this exercise. So we're scaling by two. And of course, if it's a short position, that's easy to uh, project, to estimate. We just multiply by negative two to get the short position. Okay, so we follow here the guide that's set out here, if you like, in the label. It'll be equal to, we'll go with a negative, so negative value, so that it's short. And it's not just one call option, it's actually two. And we're multiplying, and then we open our brackets. It's the maximum of, again, the stock price minus the relevant strike price, which is K2. And then we've got to F4 that to lock the cell reference, and then comma zero minus the appropriate premium, right? So this time it's 1045, lock the cell reference, close off the bracket and job done. So let's uh, pull that down, right? And those are payoffs. Can we include that in our graph select? And we should probably edit the first one and it's the long, uh, C1, let's call it C1. Okay, consistent with the strike of the low strike. Okay, and um, then add, and we will say uh, short. So perhaps two short C2 on the X axis always the same, it's the same range of stock prices on the vertical axis. We'll take that out and just highlight these payoffs here and then hit OK. And you can see we have uh, our C2. Now let's make sure that we multiply by two. Did we multiply by two? It would appear we did. And can we compare with the graph we had previously. Okay, there is some resemblance. Um, if we uh, make the lower exercise higher, uh, we probably would preserve a bit better these relativities, but let's go with what we have for the moment. Then finally, K3. So the third payoff, uh, the third option we have here is a long option and the exercise is X3 or K3. Uh, that's simple to set up. Again, it's very like the first one, maximum relevant stock price minus the higher exercise, Fn F4 to lock the cell reference, comma, zero. So we truncate negative, negatives and uh, we subtract away the relevant premium which will be very small, but make sure to lock the cell reference hitting F4. Uh, let's drag that down and then let's incorporate that into the graph. So select data and add, and we have long uh, and it is C3, right? So long C3, the underlying is this range of stock prices and the payoff on that strategy is these 
payoffs here. Okay, so let's take a look at that for a moment. We have two short C2 long, C1 long, C3, that looks fine, right? That's our graph. We have basically the, the key elements here, the key constituents. What we're missing then is the combination. To get the combination, then uh, we just add all the elements together. So it is the summation equal to sum and open bracket and just drag across. And that will give us the sum and then drag down and then to incorporate into our graph. Uh, again, not that complicated. Select data, uh, add term. So it's the three option positions. So combination of the, X, the horizontal axis is all, always the same. And then we have to be careful to get the right payoff, which is the final column here. Let's just copy, let's just highlight, and let's hit OK. So if we take a look at this, what do we observe here in terms of the option strategy? It does look like a butterfly. Uh, this wing here is consistent with this wing here. We can verify that here, 22, 22, 82, 82. That's fine. We might consider using a different um volatility okay that helps us maybe discern a little bit but overall what we observe here is the um butterfly and we can put that those legends in at the bottom um if needs be perhaps we could go with a maximum of 200 uh here and i think that's fine Right, that gives us a little bit and we can pull re-dimension and pull down. Okay, so we have a butterfly. We have the gains here are maximized when the stock price stays around 100. If we change this to uh, 70, then we must change this to 130. And we have uh, 130, 130, and you can see here we get the same uh, type of symmetric shape. Um, if we widen this to 50, then we must go to the other side 150, and again we get a very similar type of shape. If we take uh, AC 100, 120, we just have to make sure that the middle value here is halfway between the 80 and 120, right? Um, and we can then experiment with the time period, maybe with like two years to consider and so on. So this is a, we've set it up in a fashion where we can dynamically uh, alter the parameter inputs and observe the payoffs. Always we get this reliable butterfly shape. Profits are maximized when the stock price uh, is close to the middle exercise at expiry. And then there's some cost in setting up the strategy, uh, which is uh, non-trivial, but the cost here and over this side are the same. We can observe that. And all the action in terms of the profits is between the lower and the higher exercise. Okay, so that's our, our butterfly spread and uh, we've set it up.